morning again. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's amazing how you pick a topic and uh, the pastor picks a verse that goes along with it and testimony goes along with it. And it's a pretty really God thing. So, uh, it's good to be up here this morning and to share. So, uh, first I'm going to read from Luke 10, verse 25. We would uh, stand and uh, we'll read the familiar scripture together. Amen. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarius, gave him to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the direction you give us. Thank you that you are the great example of love and help us to love our neighbors. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So I have a different spin on, on a couple of, on the phrase here that uh, I'm going to talk about for a little bit this morning. And uh, that is about loving your neighbor as yourself. So I think everybody has a everybody has an idea in their head of what it means to love your neighbor. <coughs> so I could ask you all to go around and say say that, but uh, I'll spare you. <laughs> so to, when you love your neighbor. You you help your neighbor, you respect your neighbor, you uh, do something nice for them, pray for them, interact with them, uh, and all that good stuff. So, back to the, where it says, love your neighbor as yourself. So, how do you love yourself? That's how you're supposed to love your neighbor. Uh huh. <laughs> So do, you, do you love yourself the same way? You know, in these days, there's a lot of depression. Uh, you know, I think with the, with the media and uh, and the bullying and uh, and the, maybe the judgment of everybody, they put it out there publicly on Facebook and all that stuff that uh, has led to depression and people forget how to love themselves. 
So, uh, you know, the biggest way to love yourself is to take care of yourself physically and spiritually. Uh, I'll interject here another little thing about love. That love's been our theme here the last month or so. But a lot of people think love is the opposite of hate. I beg to differ. Love is not the opposite of hate. Love is the opposite of not loving. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. so when uh, when the Pharisee and, the, and the, when they walked by the Samaritan, I don't think they hated the Samaritan. They just didn't love him. They didn't do anything to love him. True. So the same way with our neighbors. If, if you have a neighbor. You don't even know your neighbor. You never talk to him. I don't think you love your neighbor because you don't. You don't hate him, but I don't think you love him because you don't even know him. How can you know if some, how can you love somebody you don't know? Yeah. So maybe we need to you know, make some effort sometimes to know our neighbor, whether it's a, a coworker or the guy that lives next to you or somebody you see every day. Wherever. So, some things you can do to help yourself to love yourself is you you, know, you get help when you need it. You know, you, you know, that's hard for us to do most of the times. We uh, take uh, keep our worries to ourselves. We uh, don't reach out to others. You need to reach out and you know, surround yourself with godly people, which you've all made an effort today to do that. And so you must care about yourself. You're here. That's a good thing. You need to eat well, and take care of your physical body, and uh, pray, and take care of your spiritual, your spirit life. So I entitled this uh, talk today, The Lust for Life. And lust means an overwhelming desire or craving. So it's easy to say we all have that lust for our physical lives. We all do whatever we can to keep our, to extend our lives, to keep our lives going. Uh, we, go, we go to doctors, we go. We, uh, read all about how to take care of our physical lives. So we also have a spirit life. So do we go to that same extent to take care of our spirit life? And, uh, you know, our earthly life is like a speck on the wall in this building compared to the time of eternal life. So, you know, it's, it's an infinite number, but, you know, if, if you care about your earthly life one time, you should care about your spirit life a thousand times that. I know it's more infinite number, but a thousand sounds a, a lot. We get to that point, we're doing really good. <laughs> So the familiar phrase that uh, we've talked here over the last <coughs> number of years is that you are a spirit, you live in a body, and you have a soul. So there, there again, we have our spirit life and we have our earthly life. So we're going to uh, kind of make a comparison of the two, of your earthly life versus your spirit life. And uh, you know, when, when a baby is born or when you first find out you're pregnant and you, uh, you, you're all excited and you, and you, have a, a, you have a reveal party and it's so great and everybody's happy and should be very much so. And then uh, you 
give birth and you have, you're born. You, uh, and again, everybody's very excited and makes, a, makes a, celebrates and has a, a party and, and uh, you know, it's a new thing that the parents really are, are overjoyed and the family's overjoyed and all your friends are overjoyed and uh, it's a good thing. In your spiritual life, when we're born again, uh, it should be the same way, and I think it is in your your church, your Christian friends. I think are overjoyed. It's probably the single single uh, biggest joy you can have as a as a Christian when you see uh, somebody come to the Lord, and, uh, and the, the Bible says even the angels rejoice. Yes. At that moment. Yes. Yes. Amen. So as the as the baby grows up, you, uh, he starts taking baby steps. He's crawling around, learning to walk, and uh, bumping into things, and uh, making a lot of mistakes, and dumping his food off the off his plate and uh, sometimes we get frustrated and try to think they should learn faster. Uh, again, over in our spirit life, as a new Christian, when you see a new Christian, uh, the same thing's going to happen. It doesn't have to be a five-year-old Christian. It can be a baby, a baby Christian. A baby in the spirit life can be 70 years old or 50 years old or 20 years old. It doesn't have to be a baby. But yet, that's how we are in the spirit life. We, uh, you know, and as Christians that have been Christians longer, we might judge a new Christian who doesn't know how to walk. They don't know how to, Very true. How to and they're learning. So in the in the spear life, and you're taking those baby steps. I would compare that to uh, start reading the Bible and uh, having that desire to learn and follow uh, Christ. And uh, you know, it's a most people. It's a new way of life, and they have to learn. They have to learn how to go about that. So then it comes to the teenage years. So, like, <laughs> if you have any teenagers, me. <laughs> so we were all teenagers once, and uh, you start learning about life. You uh, do some things you probably shouldn't do, and you cop a little attitude. And, uh, you worry about what others think. Uh, you try to try to impress other people. So as a, as a teenager, a teenager in the spirit life, you know, you uh, might uh, question God's plan for yourself. Uh, you look at other Christians and compare yourself to them instead of care, comparing yourself to Jesus and Comparing yourself to what you should do, just like a teenager says, "Well, he did it; I can do it." And, you, know, you might look at somebody that supposedly a Christian, and, and they say, "Well, you know, he does that; I can do it. It's no harm in that." And he doesn't know the word; he doesn't uh, understand. And that's part of the growing up in the spirit world. I keep wanting to say spiritual, but for the for the day, I'm just saying spirit world. <laughs> so as a young young adult, we all start growing up, and uh, you know, if we're fortunate, we meet a, a mate, and uh, 
have a family, get a job, start living your own life without without your parents, without guidance, and uh, you uh, another whole learning set of learning because it's something you haven't done. And you've, uh, uh, you know, you've relied on your parents to give you direction, and, and sometimes as a young adult, you probably think they give you too much direction, but <laughs> you want to fly. You want to be. Uh, you want to fly on your own set of wings, and. and uh, as a young adult in the spirit world, um, maybe you're, uh, you start telling others about God. You, uh, you start praying more. You, uh, but uh, as you study the Word, you get convicted of things that might not align with the Word, and you, uh, you have to change your ways. And uh, working on the process of sanctification. Which, uh, as Pastor Donnie has taught us, uh, sanctification is becoming more like Jesus and less like us. So we have a ton of examples in the Word, including the one I just read here, a parable that Jesus gave us. And uh, we have to learn from that and take it to heart. And uh, you know, if you if you're if you're not doing it and you're uh, you are dedicated uh, to the Word and uh, your Christian life. You will be convicted, and, uh, and you will you will probably change, or you will need to change, or you will continue being convicted, or or maybe uh, start start backsliding a little bit and, and let it let God's way go by the side, and, and keeping the, the your earthly body side happier and uh, not you're thinking you're keeping it happier and not uh, doing that. So then you uh, in, the, in our earthly life we become uh, mature, we start getting old and uh, you know we grow up we, we have a more uh, we think we have a more designated plan for our life and uh, might have some grandchildren and uh, start thinking about retirement and, and uh, start having maybe some more uh, physical ailments and all that good stuff. And uh, in the spirit world, uh, as we become more mature, we uh, you know, take pleasure in being in the presence of uh, God's people and uh, in God of God presence of being in the presence of God through uh, you know, maybe your reading time or prayer time. Uh, you take pleasure in worshiping with others, telling others about God and and what He's done in your life through your uh, past experiences through as you grew up through all those stages. That you can kind of understand and guide the younger, younger Christians. And again, that doesn't mean that you're kids. That just means Christians that have uh, are new, are new into the you know, recently given their lives to God. So you know you can be a seventy-year-old baby in the in the Christian in the spirit world. And then uh, the end of our earthly life is death. But at that stage in our spirit life, there's no death. It's eternal life. So, uh, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we just, uh, we have a it's a sad day when we uh, pass here on earth and uh, it's sad for the people that are around them but for those who know that there's an eternal life and that they know that uh, they 
whoever has passed away is going to a better place and eternal has eternal love and should be a celebration. There's a saying that uh, if you live if you live twice, you die once. If you live once, you die twice. It's a little hard to comprehend. But if you uh, if you live twice, so if you if you live the, if you're born to your parents and then you're born again in the spirit, so that's your two births, but you're only gonna die once. So you're, you're going to live forever. And again, if you live once, that means you're going to be born by your parents. and means you haven't received Jesus. You're not born again. Then you're going to die twice. You're going to die the earthly life and the spirit life. You know, John 3.16, which everybody knows, uh, says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. So that's the that's the life we're looking for. So the, the spirit life affects the earthly life. So if you if you accept Jesus and you follow his plan and and he opens and closes doors for you it definitely has a big influence on your earthly life. And um, you, you, uh, your earthly life without, without God in your life can be miserable and long and uh, go down the wrong road a lot of times. And, and, and uh, with, it's not so great. But if you have the Spirit if, you're, if the spirit life is affecting your earthly life, you know you can have peace, you can have satisfaction in what you're doing, uh, happiness, joy, regardless of your uh, trials and tribulations. You're going to have the trials and tribulations regardless. Some, but they're going to compound and be even worse if you don't let the spirit life influence your earthly life. So what length would you go to to extend your earthly life? You know, we, we go to the doctor all the time. You know, never stop going to the doctor. And we want every little uh, thing in our bodies to be perfect. And, uh, and I know there's people that go to Mexico for some strange cure that... Uh, Probably not going to help you, but it might. <laughs> and uh, travel all over the world. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the cancer world, it's very, very expensive. Drugs and all that stuff. And if people don't have the right insurance or whatever, are they going to sell their house? Are you going to give up everything you have to live an extra month or a year? You know, again, in the in the realm of the spirit world, what's a month? What's a what's a year? It's yeah. nothing. And uh, so, how far would you go to ensure your spirit life is secure? Would you? Would it be all right to go to church a couple times a month? They hope that long. Would that put you out of your way? Uh, so I think we kind of we kind of have that backwards, and uh, we don't we don't see the. I think we do if we think about it, but we don't give it the value uh, to increase our spirit life, to increase our relationship to God, and, and uh, secure our path with Him, and. Uh, Make, make our spiritual life better and uh, more rewarding by going that extra 
extra foot, but yet we'll get an extra mile with our physical bodies to make sure that we're doing well. Um, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So, Kim, that's kind of along the line of what you were talking about there this morning. And, uh, that's really awesome that some kids can start realizing that at a young age. Because uh, we, uh, we don't do that enough. In my life, I was, uh, I grew up in church and I was, uh, I was born again when I was uh, 14 and I was baptized and I lived, uh, I lived a godly life for a few years, five years probably. And uh, you know, I'm, I was saved, but I think I was 45 and I was still a teenager. And uh, yeah, it's something that all of, you know, all of you can think about and see where do you think you are in your spiritual life and what you can do to, you know, if, uh, what you can do to, to get closer to being a, a mature Christian and be able to help others and not do what I did. And, uh, you know, thank God He gave us gave me a second chance and uh, uh, you know, it's uh, been very rewarding. My life those, uh, through those times was uh, was pretty tough sometimes. And uh, again, I want to thank God for uh, giving me that second chance. So I think with the if you can if you can influence your earthly life with your spirit life. Uh, you can enjoy your journey through life a lot more. You can, uh, and you can feel, you can feel when God opens up doors or when He closes doors. You don't have to fight that. You don't have to be upset when something doesn't work out. When and uh, when there's another opportunity in front of you, you can take it with confidence, knowing that uh, God uh, is influencing you and. Uh, and is preparing, uh, is uh, preparing, making your life better. That's what he. That's what he. Uh, he says he wants to make your life a more abundant life. We sang about in, uh, in, the, in the word. He wants us to have an abundant life. He doesn't want us to just get by, or he doesn't want us to be sick. He wants us to live an abundant life. So in closing, I'm going to read this uh, verse from James 1.12. It says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So that's all your goal, is to receive that crown of life. I hope that's all your goals. And, uh, and let others know about how their life can be better and uh, God wants their life to be better and uh, anything we can do to let people know about that is uh, that's, a, that's another crown you receive in God's kingdom whenever you do that so let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer dear Lord thank you uh, that you do Give us opportunities and and uh, chance, second chances, and uh, we can grow in your word. And uh, you uh, you prod us and you uh, convict us, so that uh, we know what, what, when, and where to uh, move and uh, to change to become more like you. Thank you that you. Uh, sent Jesus into our world to give the ultimate price so that through Him we can have eternal life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, how sweet that
Jesus never glory to him.